uh, called the Patient Protection Act for a reason. Uh, our bottom line present premise is this. There is one very successful model that has been operating in Canada for over a decade. Uh, the biggest complaint about it is that the product is too limited in the sense that there's only one strain, and that, of course, is changing. Uh, the Canadian government, not the company, is what lobbied uh, for the regulations and, and demanded that regulations be put in place, predominantly testing of the product, because it was marketed there as well as medical. And in fact, that was the uh, genesis of the court case that put this into play in the first place. A person that was ill in uh, the province of Ontario sued the government to make marijuana available uh, for treatment for his illness. He won and the government had to make it available. It was a scramble, a mad scramble. They finally figured it out. They went to a bioengineering firm, which is the company that I uh, am retained by, and they've spent the last 11 years perfecting the process to grow, process, and distribute to patients. The model demanded by the government was that the product be thoroughly tested. They like to brag that this exceeds what they believe the FDA would require in the United States. I'm not a scientist. I can't attest to that, but that's what they do. <coughs> Things that they test for are things like mold, insects, metals from the soil, uh, and also, of course, the efficacy of the product itself. In other words, as Dr. Kahn will tell you, the bill sponsor and other physicians, one of the challenges is that you don't really know how strong the product is, and therefore it is difficult to suggest the amount that a person should ingest from week to week. All of that said, it needs to be made very, very clear here that our intent has been from day one for a multitude of reasons to make sure that what is on the books today, uh, and of course, as you know, is constitutional, is not impacted in the least by what we are proposing. And we have had uh, almost three years of work into this with attorneys, uh, biologists, some scientists, and there were a number of premises that we uh, have met that we had established early and uh, while we know that there is some concern that there's some overlap with what is in the Constitution today, we wish to assure the members of the committee that uh, we are very confident that is not the case. And the reason that we would not want to have any overlap, if you boil it right down to the bottom line, is if there was, and it was challenged in court, this would be thrown out. What's in the Constitution is in the Constitution. This is nothing more than an option and a choice for patients and physicians that seek to know what it is that's in what they are ingesting, period. So with that said, let me go through the points that we met in the drafting of this bill. Uh, this this uh, product, of course, was marketed to the public as medical. Our fundamental premise is that we, in fact, make it medical. Pharmaceutical grade, pure, predictable, measurable, tested, every step of the way. Uh, it will be, we believe, a small segment of the market but it will be a choice, it will be an option, and that is what the industry is all about, is options for the patients. Uh, we uh, sought to make this parallel, we have, we sought to make this prospective, to make sure that we were kept honest and everyone else was kept honest. This bill doesn't take effect unless the federal government, not the state, changes this to a Schedule II drug. We are hopeful that will happen. We believe that will happen. Steps have been taken in that direction. It would be helpful for the industry as a whole because then it would be much easier for labs, scientists to uh, research and experiment with this drug, learn more about it. It is virtually untapped. The potential for the product itself is, uh, by many accounts, uh, tremendous. It's inexpensive and it's not controlled by Big Pharma, all of which is a plus. Uh, so it would be prospective. This would be an example that we would uh, propose to the federal government as an option for those that choose to know what is in their product. If they don't, they can continue to buy from their caregiver. Uh, it would be secure, which of course is desirable by all of us, especially if there's more than a few plants in play. It would be thoroughly tested. We covered that, including the THC level in the plant. There are no requirements for testing today, none. Uh, it would be distributed only through pharmacies. Again, this is to play it straight, treat it as a pharmaceutical, make sure that that, is, that uh, principle is upheld throughout the process. We are calling for it to be taxed. We think it should be taxed, similar to liquor, uh, other manufacturers of pharmaceuticals, it should be taxed. I do have a correction. I had put in my outline to legislators that this included bidding. That is incorrect. 
In fact, it's more open than that. What this bill simply says, and the department corrected me on this when they saw the outline, is that anyone, any company that can meet the standards set forth in the bill could potentially be licensed. There will be no RFPs issued. It would be based on those that can meet the standards that are established by the department in an existing in current law. Uh, so it is still uh, very much regulated, but uh, there is true opportunity here. The fact is, no single corporation could meet the market even if they wanted to. The company in Canada is up to 12,000 patients today. That is a fraction of that market as well. They have individual growers. The number of cardholders in the state, as you know, exceeds 180,000 and grows every day. There is no company that could meet that market. It's not possible. Uh, also, the MAPS system, which physicians access uh, for many different reasons, would include uh, the issuance of a card to a patient. The medical community uh, believes that is a step forward, and I am not speaking on their behalf. I'm simply saying that what they had told us early on is that if the physicians knew that the patients were in fact ingesting this product, they would then be in a position to be able to judge uh, interactions with other medications, which is what they feel is their job. And today, there are physicians that will tell you that some of their patients simply don't disclose that they may be taking marijuana. So uh, that said, the MAP system is a closed system, as you know, and uh, it would be used only as a tool. Uh, we see this as mitigating risk for growers as well as patients. Uh, if there is something that shouldn't be in the plant, whether it's mold, pesticides, uh, insects, uh, this is a plant that grows very fast. It throws off a liter of water a day. Uh, it's a sticky product on the outside of the plant. You can't separate that from whatever may be contaminating it later. Uh, in fact, the company in Canada uses a two-step process culminating in irradiation to make sure that mold is taken care of. Uh, this mitigates that risk for those that are sensitive to or simply do not want to be able, uh, do not want to be uh, exposed to any of those potential contaminants. Uh, again, patient choice. Uh, and that, Senator, is about as far as I can boil it down for the moment. We have uh, the department here that can speak to any of the technical questions. They're not taking a position on the bill, but they have been looking at the language and working with it. We also have the attorney uh, that's been working with the bill drafter to ensure things such as no overlap with uh, the uh, current law, greater production. Uh, working with the banking community to uh, foster uh, financing within the industry within the bounds of the law. That's fair to do. Uh, Eric Holder sending out the letter, if you are in conformance with state and local guidelines, we'll leave you alone. That's very new. That's September. Uh, the fact is that the, the two federal governments, Ottawa and Washington, D.C., have been exchanging expertise for a period of years now, talking about how to implement, how to operate, how this can work. Uh, my personal belief is that when the tax revenues show from the two states that have legalized, there will be a tremendous push to make this even more available. Uh, but again, we're looking for that narrow niche, the patient and the physician that seeks a product that is thoroughly tested as their choice for where they'd like to go. With everything else, of course, uh, remaining in place, it's in the Constitution. Yes, you know, I, I was, you know, for the record, I mean, I've always been very supportive of the medicinal use of marijuana. Mm -hmm. When it was a ballot initiative, um, I recall vividly being a part of a lot of the debates that, that were had. You know, I think it's an unusual step for the legislature to act in case something may or may not happen at the federal level, and that's the nature of my questions, not to the substance of what you're trying to accomplish. But when I look at that, you know, um, I think it's important to acknowledge attorney general discretion is very different than congressional approval, and so I'm just trying to to understand what. You know, um, I, I mean, uh, for instance, I know where our attorney general probably is on the issue, where he's always been, um, and whether or not this body acts and, you know, who has, who controls the issue, and that's the legislative branch, ultimately, when, with regard to changing the, um, the FDA category, so. Uh, that's, that is subject to debate, and we strongly believe that that very well may not be the case. There are those that oppose the use of marijuana. 
that will tell you that it absolutely cannot take place without congressional approval. They will also tell you that what has been done at the federal level thus far, and at the state level, including Michigan, uh, is all illegal and out of bounds. However, we are where we are. It's here. And the public uh, interest only increases. So based on that and the fact that uh, governments are interactive, uh, there are many questions and concerns about what's on the books today, even by those that are participating in the industry. There are things that could have been written better and more clearly. Uh, whether you support it or not, that's the case. Uh, we are convinced, and uh, we know that we certainly have those that support that are convinced that going forward with a model for those that want the option for a fully tested product is something that should be um, presented as an alternative as this goes forward, and it certainly is moving forward. Okay. Well, it's easier to steer now than it is to correct anything on the Hill. You just had a bill or a resolution in that realm uh, after the fact, and that's where we're coming from. I just I do recall a debate about a year ago with regard to gun control where this body was moving forward making all sorts of assumptions what was going to come out of DC and we looked pretty foolish when we did that. So that's the sensitivity on in, in regard to that. And I'm curious about um, the Michigan pharmacists if you've had feedback from them because it's my understanding that as things like this have percolated in the past that that's been a real point of contention and I'm just curious what you can share on that front. Well, I, I can't speak for them. That's Larry Wagonack, who is the liaison with their organization. Uh, his quote to me on the phone after draft two, prior to draft three, which is before the committee now, was that uh, they're very comfortable with the language and he wouldn't change anything. We went there first. And the reason we went there first is because one of our tenets was distri distribution through a pharmacy uh, to be true to our approach to how this should be handled. And again, it goes back to what the public initially passed. What they thought they were voting for was medical marijuana. Now where there's disagreement is what medical means. And many in the industry will tell you medical means that the patient wants it and it helps. Well, that's one definition of medical. The other definition of medical is pharmaceutical. And we know that you can't sell many things in this state without having some tests in place or federally. What we're saying is, if it's a drug, it's a drug, let's test it. Let's at least give that option to those that are sensitive to some of the things that we know can mix with this plant if not grown properly. The fact is, many or most of the population wouldn't care and they're going to continue to grow their own or buy from their caregiver or whatever the case may be. But there is a percentage and certainly uh, within the physician community that believes that number one, they want to know exactly what's in it and that it's pure and they want to prove it. But I've also had physicians say to me about the mold discussions and the other things, you know what, that all, all of that is important, but that's not my priority. My priority as a physician is, I don't know the efficacy and I can't dose. If you don't test it, I can't dose. And that's where they're at. We are addressing that segment as best we can. And we are hoping that it goes to schedule two because then all the testing and the research can be done. Today, technically speaking, you're not allowed to have marijuana in a laboratory. And that's, I, I think everyone would agree, ridiculous, given the narcotics and other things that we've been researching for lifetimes. I have one, one more question. Um, in your presentation, you talked about taxing the product, and so, and you made an analogy to liquor taxes. So when I was looking at what liquors, what liquors tax that is, 13% tax, well, 12% on premises, 13.85% off premises. And the way that that is dispersed, there's 29% goes to the general fund, 29% goes to the school aid fund, 29% goes to the convention visitor bureau. 13% goes to the Liquor Purchase Revolving Fund. Are those percentages that you're comfortable with having made the analogy? We don't have a position on that. Our premise is A, it should be taxed. B, it shouldn't, we don't want the shell game of tax the drug itself because of course we don't have tax prescriptions. So make sure that the, it is the manufacturer that in fact is taxed. And we expect a surtax because of what the product is. Uh, obviously, that's limited to the narrow niche that we believe this addresses. Uh, but 
Uh, it's taxed in Canada. It should be taxed here. Uh, it is a profit-making venture. That only makes sense. <laughs>